Okay, guys, so if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. You know, first of all, it's free. Y'all know I love some free stuff. And there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or the computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so much more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Like, it's super amazing. I love it. It's been very beneficial for me. So make sure y'all download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, make sure you download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right. Hey, everyone. It's the 21 Minutes or Less podcast. And today we're talking about self-esteem. Um, I know this is something that I think about a lot because I have come so far with my self-esteem. Like, I feel like college really helped me with that. Um, I went to an HBCU. So, I feel like it was just uh, being uh, surrounded by a lot of the same types of people. And, you know, that can seem like a competition sometimes. But, um, yeah, I feel like college, I reached some really low points that helped me to be like, okay, I don't ever want to feel like this again. So let me not move like this. Like, for instance, I know I was in this really toxic situation for like a whole year. And I was just like, what? Like, I'm worthy of a fucking relationship. Right. So why would I wait a year ever again to be with somebody? And I never did. And now me and my current boo, we got together after like two months. So it's just about learning like your lowest points and being yeah. like, I'm never going back there again. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like I think college played played a role for me too or like I guess like senior year somewhat Mm -hmm. of high school um but like freshman year sophomore year I had such low self-esteem like um not only like about looks and stuff because I felt like I was so skinny you know I was like Mm -hmm. super duper skinny in high school and it was a lot of girls way like thicker than me and then of course all the boys would be talking about oh who the thickest in the school blah blah so I, I was like super skinny and I'm like okay then my chest was developing late it was just all that and then I don't know we also was going through like a struggle of with money and stuff during that time mm-hmm. so I couldn't get like the newest shoes and all that type of stuff and we went to a school that was very you know like upscale when it came to yeah. money people like their parents were police officers and lawyers and uh, we went to upscale kind of school so um that was a big thing shoes especially Mm -hmm. um so not having that also played a part in me feeling like okay i already don't feel the best as far as look and then now i can't get the stuff that everybody have Mm -hmm. so that was like took like took a toll on me and then like senior i just started not caring at all and then by college it's like when you go to college you know it's a whole new thing like don't Mm -hmm. nobody know you you know you might have a few people you went to high school with but it's a whole new thing, and everybody not so much concerned about shoes and clothes. Like, it's a little bit more free um, well, and open. Not at Savannah State. Not at HBCUs, girl. <laughs> well, I went to the they, they was like, it was, it was like a fashion, fashion show. show every day. And the calf is like, <laughs> walking down the middle of the calf is an extreme sport. Really? Okay, so, <laughs> so well, I figured, I, I, I could see that at an HBCU. So, that's probably good I didn't go to HBCU mm-hmm. starting off. Um, but I went to DePaul and it was like, you know, it's the mix. It's definitely predominantly white. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, they don't really pay attention to clothes, but the black kids that were there, um, they were not like that either. Like most of us were pretty much the same. So, um, even though by then I had my own money and stuff so I could dress how I wanted. So it was like, yeah. I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. really much of a concern anyways, cause I could get what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think college was like, okay, stepping out, I was starting to get a little bit thicker, like I was filling in more, like I was kind of getting my, you know, getting my freshman 15, so now I was a little <laughs> thick, and people started to see it, and the, everybody was checking me out, I'm like, okay, okay, but it wasn't necessarily <clears throat> just the guys, it was just me, you know, learning to love myself and right, love yeah. me, and you know, because um, that's what you got to do first before anybody else you know love you and stuff is finding what you like about yourself and my main thing was my hair and I think that's why 
I was taking such good care of my hair. My hair started growing and stuff. And um, me working out and just getting bigger, I started to care more about myself. And then that's when the confidence came in, too. Okay, that's pretty good. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with what you said about... Um, Dang, what you just said. <laughs> I'm trying to think, but it was like a great point. Um, oh, about not having the money. Oh, the yeah. money that will make your self esteem. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that kind of almost like plays a role in yeah. self esteem because if you don't have the money to buy the things you want, right. you're not gonna feel confident. You're not and gonna you know feel how like high school was. Like, yeah, was even in very, college though, it's yeah. like you got money now. You're not just living off your parents, right. but you still poor. You still broke. Yeah. You living off your Pell Grant. So, you don't want to spend all your money on a nice right. clothes or a nice shoes. But I do feel like, like you said, in college, that's where I found stuff that I like, which right. made me feel better mm-hmm. about myself. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, oh my gosh, I can get weave this long? Like, right. Mm-hmm. I can get nails this long? And then the thing is, like, <laughs> in high school, even though, even if you were able to buy that stuff, your parent might not necessarily yeah. would have bought it for you. Like, I could have got, like, the time my mama did finally get on her feet and stuff like that and was able to buy me certain things, it wasn't like she was going to go buy me the two pairs of Jordans. I wanted, right. like, you got to pick. You want but, this pair or yeah, this Yeah, but in college, it's like, if I really wanted to go get them two pairs of Jordans, mm-hmm. I could have, like, um, so that's, I feel like, where, you know, most people probably get their confidence and stuff or, like, after high school, pretty much, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like. You don't have nobody telling you what to do, yeah. how to dress, what to put on. Like, you can just do what you want to do. Like, I remember I wanted to dye my hair blonde, and my stepmom was like, no. Like, yeah. no, no, no. College, and then, just in college, as soon as I got to college, I dyed my hair blonde. And I was like, <laughs> that's why you said don't do that shit. Yeah. <laughs> my hair broke off, but it was a learning experience. And right. it was like, I was still able to do something I wanted to do to help my esteem or my confidence with how I look. Right. Yeah. And I feel like looks play a huge part in self esteem. Like whether people want to admit it or not, it's like eighty percent it looks, twenty percent on the inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Don't feel it, I well, mean. luckily for me, um, my mom and family have always said, "Oh, you you're pretty, or mm-hmm. you beautiful, or they will always like give that affirmation yeah. to me." To where I was like, oh, well, I'm not, at least I know I'm not ugly. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I will always get that information. As far as not having growing up, definitely didn't have. So, I started hustling at a young age. I used to babysit and do stuff so I can have money. Even right. if it's just, like, a little bit of money here and there. And then, um, in high school, I started working. I started yeah, I did um co-op because it was certain things that I wanted and then mm-hmm. my mom couldn't afford yeah. and then I even contributed as far as like to paying bills and stuff like that because I knew my mom needed it and then if I helped her I was indirectly helping myself right. so I think that played a big role as far as me trying being as ambitious as I am it's because I know what it's like to not have. And I don't want to, like, ever go through that yeah. <laughs> again. But I feel yeah. like my, I, I, my mom has always also told me, like, you cute and all this stuff. But it's a matter of other allowing other. But the thing is, nobody ever called me ugly. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody ever said I was ugly. Nobody mm-hmm. thought I was ugly. It was just me thinking, comparing myself That's to other ugly. people. Mm-hmm. Like, comparing myself like I was like I said, I was super skinny, like 90 pounds in freshman year, like super duper skinny, so me being that, me (laughs) being that skinny, it was just like, uh uh-uh, and then in the, you know, on the south side of Chicago, everybody thick, or like, that's Mm -hmm. the thing, like, Chicago, if you a thick girl, you know, everybody like you and stuff, so it's just like, that was the main thing of, that guys always talk about, or females always talk about, was being thick. And so I always wanted to be thick. That's just it. I wanted to be thick. And it was like, my cousins was thick. My mama, everybody was thick. And I was just here, skinny, no titties, no booty. And I'm just like, okay, guys, so when is it going to come in? Because I know I can't be skinny for the rest of my life like that. And, yeah, once that freshman 15 came, I was like, oh, okay. So that's how I was supposed to be looking. Yeah, I think high school, it was like, challenging for me it was like 
even that was a step up from what I had in like middle school and elementary yeah. school because like for me I used to think I was so ugly I ain't taking no pictures so like I don't have a lot of pictures from my right. childhood or nothing because I was like I'm not gonna get in a picture like I don't look cute what and then in high school I started taking more pictures um of course technology was developing too so we had more better cameras Mm -hmm. camera phones all of that but once I started taking pictures I was like oh I'm not ugly right yeah it's like something just click and be like okay and then the one thing like I said the one thing I could say that people always would say about me like they would notice my hair first. Like when I was in moved from the suburbs back to Chicago, my hair was super long down my back. Mm-hmm. So it was always, Oh, what do you mix with? Even though that's terrible to say, but mm-hmm. what do you mix with? Why is your hair so long? So that was the main thing people always say. In high school I came in to high school with blonde hair. Mm-hmm. I was the only girl really with like blonde streaks in my hair and they're like, Your mama let you get blonde streaks and I'm like yeah Yeah. (laughs) and so like it was always my hair then college came same thing I was washing people hair all types of stuff so it was always my hair for me and so it's so crazy that now I'm like a natural hair influencer like I think that played a Mm -hmm. role in how I am and how confident I am now as far as my hair and my looks and stuff like I, that's one thing I always get compliments on was my hair you know what's so crazy I do not know how to put on makeup like my aunt does hair <laughs> My hair's done. Um, <laughs> we grew up in the same household, so my hair was always done. Yeah. She she been knowing how to do hair since she was a child, and doing eye hair. So anytime she wanted to do a new hairstyle, oh Nikki, come here so I can um, yeah. come try this new hairstyle on you. Yeah. My hair was always done. And um, as far as now, my sister loves doing makeup. Yeah. So anytime I need my makeup done, that's who I go to yeah. to get my makeup done. And I was like, I need to learn how to put on lashes. I need to learn how to at least do the basics. It don't have to be dramatic, right. but at least do the basics. But I was, I just never felt the need to just learn how to put on makeup. Yeah. Because I'm always like doing other stuff, and I feel like it's too time consuming. Yeah. I can, I just need to get up and go. I think that's my issue with makeup too. I'm not really good at makeup at all, but mm-hmm. it's like I don't have time to get up every morning. Yeah, and do I don't this. see how they like literally set out like hour, get up an hour early just to do makeup. I'm not right. doing that. Now <laughs> yeah. I'd have been learning how to do certain stuff. Like now I kind of know how to do my makeup, but all that contouring and all the stuff, I don't know how to do that. But lashes, I got you. Uh, eyebrows, cool. All that I could do all that, but all that other stuff like. Mm-mm, I can't do all that but I feel like that also is a part of self esteem too because it's like why do you get up why do you not to knock nobody because you know that's maybe just like doing makeup but mm-hmm. a lot of females it's not just they like to do makeup they feel they have to do their makeup mm-hmm. because they don't feel pretty without makeup and that's kind of sad like they wear it so much then you actually see them without it and you be like oh. like kind of, right like <laughs> your nose was a little bit smaller than that yeah. and then they then it become not to say that they're ugly or anything but yeah. then they look a little weird because mm-hmm. it's like you don't wear makeup i didn't i didn't met you with makeup yeah. every day you wear makeup and then all of a sudden you just wanna or you didn't have time and then you don't have no makeup on and then it's like and then i feel like you kind of created more of low self-esteem because now everybody's saying you look so different you yeah. look so different and then now you like really self-conscious because they're like oh no oh my god now you want to put so on different. makeup more yeah so now it's making you want to put it on more because people saying you look so different but you was wearing it so much in the first place they literally have like three layers of face yes on. i like, can't yeah. do it it'd be no. hot and then i'd be rubbing my face and stuff like exactly. i don't even see how they can, like i promise you like my eyebrows okay right now <laughs> By the end of the day, I probably didn't wipe them off because I'm, like, touching my face, rubbing my eyes. Like, I do too much for me to, like, keep a full face all day. I don't see how they do it. Yeah. Because I'm, like, I asked my mom, I was, like, how do they even keep their they, uh, makeup, like, looking fresh? And she's, yeah. like, they, they keep their, like, a makeup Stuff bag with them. Yeah, they, like, just touch to up the once a day. I'm, yeah. like, they're just doing too much. Yeah, I can't do it. And not <laughs> to knock like, nobody, yeah. like I said, because... You know, some people just love the art of makeup, yeah. which I get that, like, because it is interesting once you yeah. start to know how to do the stuff. But if you're using it as like to cover up yourself, then that's when I don't agree with it. Like, I don't. I don't I know the reason that. why I really don't like wearing makeup is because I have like moles and stuff in my face, mm-hmm. and I like 
I like it. Right. Like I think it adds to my beauty. Right. You could just do like like light coverage. coverage. If you yeah. ever do like makeup like light coverage so you could still show those, you know, features. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think my glasses also contributed to my low self esteem at first cuz I remember I was little. I've been wearing glasses since forever. But I remember I was little, they tried to make me wear an eye patch because they was like, one of my eyes was bad and one of them was good. So basically they was trying to cover up the good one so wow. my bad one could get stronger. Oh, and wow. I was okay. like, I was like, oh, oh, I'm not wearing no patch. Like, I uh-uh. never even heard of that. Yeah. Like, I didn't know they did that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And then I ain't wear because I was like, I don't want to wear no patch to school. Right. That's weird. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> and then now look at me wearing glasses. That's, well, that's funny like, that you brought that up because I remember when I was uh, younger, I fell off my bike. And it, you could probably see like the little stitches right here. But, um,. And I had to go to school with a bandaid on my chin. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. <laughs> bandaid on my chin. But the thing with having chin. glasses, though, because I didn't have glasses since I was in second grade. <laughs> and so, like, when you first go, like, I feel like second grade and stuff, I don't feel like I really got made fun of for having glasses. Mm-hmm. But it was just always the fact of, you know, like, doing your hair a certain way because of your glasses or, like, mm-hmm. just, it was always had to work around your glasses in some type of way, like, even, like, now, that's why I wear contacts most of the time, only because, like, I do like to wear lashes, and I do like see, to, that's my thing. like, do all that. I can't do my lashes because yeah. I can't see in one of my eyes, so this gonna be good, but then Right, and then the glasses, the lashes would be touching the glasses and all the day curl up. So, yeah, yes. I ain't got time for that. That's so I like contact. That y'all feel that way about glasses because I am actually attracted to men who wear glasses mm-hmm. and look good in them. Like I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> I'm Not sorry. saying I would. I mean, he's fine. He's fine. But like, um, I just never. And most guys don't wear their glasses anyway. Like even if they supposed to wear glasses, they just don't wear them or they get on contact. So, but I've never seen a guy with glasses. I think was like oh he's so attractive or like oh he got glasses i don't think like glasses I, is just i'm a little, uh, I'm a little mm-hmm. weird in that sense because i like look i like nerdy intellectual type of men so not saying that they automatically mean right. they wear glasses you know wear yeah. glasses but i just find it attractive yeah <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I had no more glasses all my life. As soon as I was able to get contacts, it was over with. I'm like, I kept some contacts with me. That's my thing. I can't with my nails, though. Right. Contacts is almost like the getting up early for makeup thing. Yeah. Because it literally takes me like 40 minutes well, to put them both in. Well, have you ever seen a little thing that they got where you could just set the contact on the little thing and now you could just put it in your eye? If you get that, mm-hmm. you could have your long nails. <laughs> And it'd be simple. I'm I'm gonna send it to you because I have seen it too. Because I'm like, how I know how to do it. I don't get nails that long, but when I do have long nails, I know how to, mm-hmm. um, you know, like do it. But they do have a thing where it's like a little thing that go just straight on, and you it's just like your finger. Yeah, um, but you probably could use that. But once I was able to get contacts, it was over with. Like I still, I gotta get some new glasses. I don't mind wearing my glasses like in the house yeah. and stuff like that. But, like, when I'm going to wear, I like to, like I said, I like to do my makeup. I like right. to put on lashes and stuff. And my glasses just don't fit with that. Like, even in a club, that was a thing. Like, when I first started, I didn't have contact <laughs> one time going to the club and, like, oh to the parties gosh. and stuff. And having glasses. glasses. <laughs> That's it's all just, mine. Yeah, it's just, like, <laughs> everybody just dancing and stuff. And I might have to push my glasses up because I'm dancing too hard. Like, no, I don't like all that. So, I'm like, as soon as I was able to get my hands on some contacts and keep them, that's what I did because I can't. I just can't do it like in a party or at the club with some glasses on. I just yeah. it just don't feel right. Like it just don't fit. And then I'm what I'm wearing. Right, and you all that. It just like don't a bad fit. Bitch. And I got glasses. Like, like it just don't fit. And it doesn't. It doesn't. So I just That's like funny. no, I can't. I can't do this one. Like I just rather wear contacts and figure it out. Yeah, because I can't do it. I think my um. <laughs> Self esteem gets a little jaded when when I have to do like a presentation or something. Oh, yeah. Like stage Hello. fright, I have stage fright, so yeah. <laughs> I don't I know agree. why. I think Cause... that's what most people though. Like it's only very rare if a person is not scared at all. Like even mm-hmm. famous people say how scared they are of getting on stage or nervous they are of getting on stage. Like 
I used to praise dance and stuff at church, and it doesn't matter how many times I did it, every single time I was just like, uh uh-uh, uh, I can't do this, even though I didn't did it 50 times or so. Mm hmm. Um, so it's just like, I feel like most people are, have like stage fright or, you know, per- performance fright or whatever. And it just like make you feel like the littlest person ever. Like they you do. just feel like, <laughs> what am I doing? Like, like, I think it's the, the idea that all the attention is on you mm-hmm. at that point. Especially if you're not getting any feedback, mm-hmm. they, the audience just did. They're looking at you. You don't know if they happy, sad, right. they treating you in their head or what. But and you just got all yeah. these thoughts going through your head yeah. while you trying to get the material, yeah. you know, presented to them. Yeah, see the talking stuff I can't do, but like with dancing, at least like with praise dancing. Mm-hmm. You will kind of get a reaction because they either clapping or they like mm-hmm. you know yes. praising God or whatever <laughs> because y'all doing good like y'all snapping on the praise dance so you'll get a feedback from that and then you know church folks even if y'all not doing good they still come on right, baby right, you know <laughs> so okay. that was kind of the good thing like even when we got out there but the thing was our pastor was like very about you know having stuff together and stuff like even though he wasn't you know he didn't care if somebody messed up or whatever but we were trained to you know, do a good job. Like, he didn't want us out there looking a mess. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. so we were very, like, okay, a good praise dance team. And we were known on the south side of that. So it's like, you got to live up to the standards. So right. when you go out there, yeah. somebody better be getting delivered. Somebody <laughs> better be crying or something out there because, yeah. you know, that's what we were known for. Like, so that's what made it, like, okay, we get a snap. Like, we have to snap. <laughs> that's interesting that you brought up dancing because I think in the African American community, Having rhythm and being able to dance is kind of like you it's a part. A, it's a part of our yeah. culture. So yeah. if you don't know how to dance, I'm like, yeah, what what's you wrong with you? <laughs> like, yeah. what do you got going yeah. on? But um, I yeah, cause I remember growing up, I didn't know how to dance. They had to teach me how yeah. to um, dance. Like, and, yeah, <laughs> some people you got to teach. I think I always kind of know how to dance. Like, yeah, my family's just dancers, singers just musicians in general so i feel like i always know how to dance yeah what about you i can definitely dance um i used to be on a dance team but that whole social anxiety and getting in front of people Mm -hmm. all of that i don't know i think it just be the fear of them judging you or something yeah i think that's what nobody want to get judged i don't want to mess up and then i had did this poem in like fourth grade, I think that fucked me up for public speaking. <laughs> I did this Maya Angelou poem, and they kept telling me, I'm, I'm so weird. Like, they kept telling me, like, you can take the paper up there, you can take the paper up there. I'm like, no, I memorized this. Like, uh-uh, I'm not taking the paper. <laughs> then take the paper, went up there, forgot the words. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, what? And then, yeah, ever since then, i just been so anxious. Yeah. Have y'all ever, like, declined a job or opportunity or any opportunity because you felt like you wasn't able to like do the job or anything like that um no i don't think so. i don't i, I declined I it if they wasn't paying me enough money okay yeah mm-hmm. i don't think i ever mm-hmm. i feel like no mm, i can't think of nothing mm-hmm. but i could see how somebody could do that though like it's called self um sabotage yeah so a lot of people do that, like when you don't have like confidence or you don't have like a self esteem. Um, like when something comes your way, you that person would do anything to like sabotage right. the opportunity because they don't feel like they are adequate right. to like do whatever it is that is. Yeah. See now, see that I I I know I could do stuff. Like yeah. that's one thing I could say. Like even though I was low self esteem as far as looks. Thank y'all for listening to our episode today, all about self-esteem. Um, make sure y'all go follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at 21 Minutes or Less. And type 21 Minutes or Less podcast in YouTube. And then go follow our personal pages. Mine is Keisha Milana. Mine is Riz Monet. And mine is Miss Butterfly 21. And we'll see y'all.